I am Richard and I'm Sophie and we came from New Zealand to visit uh, North America. Up the front it's uh, pretty much a plain old simple sprinter van, nothing out of the ordinary when you look through the windows. The important feature I guess is the curtains which are tucked up in here. There's two of them, keep light in and keep light out to be discreet and they also velcro down the sides. So they completely uh, stop the light especially with the double thickness. The velcro really goes to the very top so that there's absolutely no light coming through. We'll see later we also have something for our skylight to make sure there's no light here either. So we can uh, cook, we can uh, read books, we can have all the lights we want and um, it's impossible to see from the outside. Uh, we also chose a very bland grey colour just so that uh, if you happen to be peeking through the front window you just kind of see Grey in the back, nothing uh, too suspicious. They came from Ikea actually. And then we can attach them when we drive so they don't annoy us with those ties, uh, which are pretty convenient and easy to fold. So this is the kitchen. The basic unit for it all came from Ikea, flat pack, nice and easy. We've got a stainless splash back behind there which we all got cut, glued straight onto the wall. A nice hard bamboo bench top. We've got our sink. That was actually made out of a just a stainless steel bowl. Salad bowl. Salad bowl. I like two dollars at about Walmart. Five bucks or something <laughs> instead of two hundred for an official sink. So uh, we just took that bowl and put a plug in it. Uh, we've got our our tap with running water. Oh no, we're out of water. <laughs> we're out we of water right sweat. now, but uh, that's okay. Underneath, we've got a bit of food storage. We've got our two tanks, grey and fresh. We chose to go for that system um, of 15 litre tanks just because it's so easy to fill them up and empty them. We can fill them up at any uh, tap, any drinking fountain, we can fill the water. And the grey water we can empty in any toilet, down any sink basically. We just have to disconnect it, go and tip it, it's really easy, super discreet. So, yeah. The one thing about the water that's uh, quite nice is you'll note that there's no uh, pump that appears because when we went to the shop and saw the size of them we were quite disappointed <laughs> about how much it would impact our storage especially because we left that until the end once we had all the containers in the room was locked we were like where are we going to put that zone we find a pump in a marine shop that's actually uh, meant to be underwater as it's opposed a little, to outside the container so a it's a little thing pump. about this big and uh, it goes through the lid in the tank and we just have to untie um, the lid and the pump comes with it. So the pump gets changed from um, tank to tank. And it was so, really cheap compared to the real ones. And um, it's quite quiet. These tanks take maybe one minute to change out and we have other tanks in the back. So we've got more fresh water if we run out. On this side we've got our little gas hob. And then we've got uh, some drawers got soft closes on them so all from Ikea easy and they, to put together. They stay out too so if you're on like a slope they don't go back in so that's quite convenient because you don't always choose where you park and because you want to be like kind of undercover you don't want to come with a big thing to put the car on horizontal balance. Right, and then under we've just got a little bit of extra storage for fruit and veggies and Things Again, like this that. is an IKEA box and you'll find it under the also from IKEA, closet yeah. department to put your socks and undies. Works really well for apples. Yep. Then at the top, we've got a big shelf which is really convenient for all the bulky stuff that doesn't really fit nicely in the cupboard. So that goes with, say, bread or all the bulk food that we, we buy. We tend to go to bulk food shops and get things like lentils and, and stuff like that to eat a bit cheap. Uh, these are normally um, not handrails. <laughs> These are like things for opening Door the handles. doors, handles, but it works really well to prevent the things from collapsing. Uh, we also find those boxes at IKEA which are really great because they're soft so they take any shape and they don't rattle when you drive which is a big thing uh, and they don't slide too much so we were quite happy with these. A little light which is uh, operated from here, also from IKEA. It's 12 volts so it can connect straight to the battery with no um, transformer or anything like that. How is it cooking in here? It's, it's good. Really well. We've got the two burners which is enough for two people. We don't really need uh, four. 
the propane tank is actually big enough that we don't need to refill until three months which is pretty much nothing and it's a really small one it's only this big but it's quite efficient we cook every morning he has like eggs and bacon, bacon so it takes a bit of propane and then in the evening we always have a hot meal like pasta or things like that we don't really try and save propane because we go for lentils pasta things that take a long time to cook um, but it works quite well it doesn't um, create any problem with the heat it's quite it's resistant uh, it's very easy to clean um, that was the whole point of having that um, and behind that which we don't see there's actually like nearly two inches of foam so it's the whole van, the van has been insulated and sprayed with foam so that we don't uh, get too hot or too cold and also that works quite well when mm. we bring some other heat sources yeah so the, the spray foam was really important to us it a insulates the van to keep it warm so you're not just trying to sleep inside a metal box it keeps it quieter when you drive down the road and at night when everything's closed up and it, it cuts down on all the condensation. You've got no bare metal anywhere, the foam is straight on the metal and sealed to it and so we don't get any condensation in the van anywhere. We're careful to put pots on our, you know, lids on our pots and so forth when we're cooking. We cook with just the skylight open a crack and it's, it's fine, we have no issues. It's always been really dry, no moisture. We would really encourage people to have um, their van insulated. It's a lot quieter too, so you can make a bit more noise inside and not being heard outside. But you can also sleep in a bit more noisy places. Yeah. Um, and yeah, the absence of condensation is like a real changer. We had, we didn't have that in our previous van, and we can really see the difference. Yeah. It is very expensive, it, and one of the rare things that it's pretty impossible to do yourself because the products that they sell for you to do aren't as I'm performing as, as the one for the professional. Um, it's a really messy job that takes a lot of time to prepare so that it doesn't go everywhere. And yet, even with that, it's still it a still lot of time everywhere. to clean all the mess. Um, but it's definitely worth it. So. Mm. I think that was the most expensive uh, step in the van, was yes. to get it insulated. Obviously, it's the first step too. We've got our fridge over here. Uh, this is a 12 volt fridge. Uh, so it doesn't run on propane. It's very economic uh, on the battery. So not economic to buy. They are reasonably expensive. It can run a solid week without charging the battery, just on a single battery. We have a secondary battery, but we can be stationary for a week with no solar or input of any kind and the battery won't die. The lights draw very little and then other than that we're just charging phones. We've got a propane alarm. That's about it, isn't it? Yeah, that's it for the... For, for electricity use, so a battery can last a long time, yeah. And yeah, then underneath we've got these storage boxes, little latches to stop them flying forward when we drive. Pretty simple, they just swivel in. We forgot to latch this one one time and it's a bit broken. It's replacing, <laughs> but this is our wardrobe. This is kind of like a stuff box. The standard boxes from Ikea, we found them before we did the spacing and just made a size that they could slip in and out. Super easy compared to setting up drawer runners and, and much cheaper and lighter and all sorts of things. So, And it means if you're using this as a weekend van, you could pull them out, take them into your house, unpack everything, repack, put them in, nice and easy. Next to that we've got a bit of a shoe rack and a fire extinguisher. Our little couch, this is where we sit for dinner. Where we spend most of our time really. We can use it like that. We can also remove the fridge and have a guest because this is the same length as the bed so you get to sleep here you sleep a third person and here. Uh, you can also lay against the back and have your feet here um, which is a nice way to read <laughs> nice comfy. Uh, without being on the bed. Our, our dining room table is actually attached to the, the side door so if I close that it's in here. This lining on the on the door just to make it all nice and tidy. And then this is our table. It's it's super tight between the the van and the door when the thing's closed, so it's got this little notch out of it, little groove in here, but it's just a case of uh, opening a couple of latches and then that folds down. Here we go. And we've got our table. Ready for dinner. This is our dinner space. Um, this is the same bamboo as the bench, um, yep. which is quite convenient. Um, that's really nice if you want to work. Say if you've got a laptop or a, a tablet or something, it's pretty awesome to eat because you've got like a decent space. Because 
um, it's like a one really one yeah. person. If you have a guest, you can also put like another chair here and have someone on the other side. The fact that it doesn't have a, a leg means that we can have a floor that's completely flat without yeah. a big hole in it, and also we don't have to store away a leg, which is something we didn't want. Or a tabletop, um, yeah. So Sorry. that took us a bit of thinking. We didn't have that the first three months, and we definitely like having a table to eat compared to eating on our knees. Yeah. It's been a huge improvement. And this is this is one thing we haven't seen anywhere else um, on any of the vans or on the internet is is this design. So we're quite happy with how it worked because it was a bit it was a bit tricky and. Um, it allowed us to keep all the floor space clear, which was really important. You're living in such a small space that it's nice to have that kind of 1.5 by 1.5 square meter. It's, it's, a, it's a huge luxury in a van, so yeah, so that's the table. And um, the reason why we've got two latches is to uh, avoid any rattling when we drive. It's all so nice and solid, it actually it makes move at all. no noise, um, which is really nice. We've left some space behind um, the passenger seat. Um, because you know our secret plans, maybe one day we'll put a fireplace. So we haven't yet been through a full winter, but we can already tell that it's getting uh, cooler here in Alaska. So uh, we've seen some uh, fireplaces for boats that would fit perfectly well here and that would be um, wood because we did, didn't really want to have propane yeah, the at the same farm. But, and we feel like wood would dry the van and feel warmer. Mm. Um, the the so, practical yeah. thing to do would be to have a propane heater or a diesel heater in the van but it just feels so much more homely to have a little wood burner and, and to burn a few pine cones and a few sticks inside the van really yeah. makes it feel like home I think rather than flicking a switch and turning on your propane. So, so that's why we've got space so we've, for that we've, here. We've left a space for that and, and we would probably have that fireplace as a removable fireplace so we can take it out in summer and put it back in in winter when we need it. Going further back on top of the fridge we've got our library. Um, it's actually quite useful because obviously you travel so you need some knowledge about where you're going and there's always those rainy days where you're stuck. It's been quite nice and we've seen that there's a lot of libraries and a lot of places that sell really cheap books or you can exchange books with others so it's about the right size you don't need a lot more. We've got our little mascot um, that's our, our little kiwi, kiwi to Zealand. remind us to use it on. It does sing the hacker. I'm not really a rugby fan, but rugby is our national sport, and um, the hacker is performed at the start of this. It's the it's the national dance, I guess, of the indigenous people. So it's a little bit of uh, culture from New Zealand. So yeah, and that sits up there on our kind of knickknack shelf where we have him and phone chargers and tissues and all that kind of stuff that you kind of want access to regularly um, is, is on that shelf under the books. Below that there's a huge space because either the fridge opens by the top which is a yep. bit of a bummer because it takes quite a bit of space but that was the best fridge we could find. And we made use of that space by um, keeping memories of our trip because obviously you're away from families you don't always have access to um, Wi-Fi or um, able to talk to uh, your friends, so it's quite nice to keep a, a, a little um, kind of diary of what we did. So all the people that we meet and uh, become a bit friend with or do something with, um, that leaves us their address. We put them on the wall and then we can remember that. And in the same sort of um, idea, we've got all the trophies we get. So we cross the Arctic Circle, we hike some hoodoos, all sort of things like that, so we put them there. And we also have a few pictures on the front wall um, to remind us of um, the past times, I guess. Mm. Yeah. Which is quite nice. Then we've got, I think, the thing that we're quite happy about, which is the skylights. Ah, uh, yes. Skylight was obviously so. a huge thing because um, you have to make a hole in the roof. So uh, there you are, it's raining like hell. Um, because that's how it was in, in February in Vancouver <laughs> and you have to make a hole in the roof and you have to do that before you do anything else because otherwise that's not going to work and so you can't wait so you find that railway bridge that happens to be on top of that Home Depot car park where you can park under and try and not be too wet and um, I'm there being like, Richard are you really sure that's the right dimension? We, we can't really have that one wrong um, we noticed that all the RVs have like plastic 
sort of top that they're pops really... out a lot and uh, they're quite visible for a start and they don't look that strong and we were not sure they were never going to leak so um, I thought about um, a marine edge because I've been doing a lot of sailing so definitely these things don't leak because they're designed for that um, and um, it turns out it worked really well because they're low profile too to try and not um, slow down an, the boards. It's only about an inch tall. So I think they're a lot better for um, fuel consumption and um, they also nobody can see it's there unless there's like several stories building next to us. It can be locked also so that no one can open it and it can also be locked with a little bit of a vent a um, which means that you can leave it all day to dry the van if required oh, and it opens fully all the way um, to so that's a really nice feature and it brings lots of light to the to the van it's also been really good for our wildlife photography yes. when we drive down the road and there's a bear and Sophie can come back here and stick her head out and take and, pictures. And take some pictures of a, of a bear or a moose or, or something like that safe from inside the van. It's also um, proved really useful to watch fire fireworks. Fireworks. We had that for the National uh, Day of Canada, which was pretty, pretty unique. It has one downside, mosquitoes want to come in. Mm -hmm. But we've got our uh, anti-mosquito feature, which we design ourselves too. It's got a couple of suction cups and some elastic and some toggles and we can, we can stick that up to the glass. That keeps out the mosquitoes, nice and easy. Or if we want to sleep at night, we've got a, a piece of foil and a, a foam cushion basically cut to fit. And that blocks out all the light. It's, it's completely black in here. With this and the curtains at the front, it's like dark. You can't see anything, um, which makes for a nice good night's sleep, especially if you're On the in the far Circle. north in the Arctic <laughs> Circle or somewhere like that. And it's daylight 24 hours a day. It's good. We've got the bed, which is our last... Uh nice feature it's um it's a normal bed like with with a normal mattress and it's on slats which is really nice because the, the first it's comfortable and then the mat doesn't get wet because it's completely it's ventilated nice the only thing is it's kind of two inches three inches shorter than a normal bed because the van is not quite as wide as a double bed so we've cut the form we selected a mattress made of foam but it's a standard mattress we're reasonably short, which is nice. So I would be a meter sixty-seven. And I'm one fifty-seven. So it works for us. Um, yeah, you can. I don't know what the overall measurement is, but I can, I can, I can certainly lie down in here without having to have um, bent legs or anything like that. Same with me. So, uh, so, uh, so that works. And, and when we were setting up the height of the bed, we were very intentional to. Make we wanted to be able to sit up in bed, but at the same time. We wanted as much storage space underneath as possible, which which we'll show you in a moment. So we tried to come to a kind of a compromise where we could sit in here comfortably, read a book, uh, watch a movie or something. We've got a little USB plug up here, so we can we can plug in a tablet or something, or or have our phones running off that. We've also got a couple of little boxes here. It's handy for kind of uh, bedtime things, spare pair of socks and undies or things like that. IKEA again. IKEA again. Yep, IKEA is fantastic. I don't know, I can't remember what they cost, but they wouldn't have been expensive. No. What about the side panel in here? That came all from Home Depot. Um, it's nice and thin. It would be about 8 millimeters or a third of an inch. So it's nice and light. It's tongue and groove, so it slots together. But because it's so thin and slots together, you can kind of bend it around the curves of the van. And it gives it a really nice feel. It's all varnished and everything. Yeah, it wasn't varnished, so we, we, all, we put three coats of varnish to make sure that it's completely um, waterproof and mm. we don't get anything soaked in. We also put behind that, um, as well as the foam insulation, um, where it was attached we put some uh, inseal tape, which is just basically a rubber tape to separate it from the outside of the van, just as a thermal break, so it's not as cold. So it's um, screwed in the ribs? It's screwed the to van. The, the structural ribs of the van. And that's why all the foam had to be trimmed because when they spray it kind of overflows and then you don't get you that nice flat surface so you need to recut everything which is a pretty time consuming process. We use a different product for the back the and back. for the side, uh, the side of the door um, because of the length and the fact that it's not supported there's nothing to screw on. And it also breaks up the, the van a bit so it doesn't all feel like you're a Sweden sauna. <laughs> Just in a sauna you kind of get a different feeling. Also the panels are removable 
Um, so if there's something happening with the locking mechanism mm -hmm. of the um, door, it's actually easy to everything's, access. Everything's screwed, so if you need to get to some cables or some, some of the mechanical things, you can take it off and get in there nice and easy. So. And, uh, and we've got the light just for the bed, which means that uh, you can go to bed and switch off the light without having to cross half of the van. We can, uh, we can remove all the cushions so, um, to make more space if somebody wants to sleep in here. Um, it's only uh, a velcro, you get a lot more space. Same with the bottom one, mm. we can remove it if we want. At the same time um, you can probably see those slats that the bed's on, nice and comfy. I guess now it's time to go and see what we've got under the bed. Yes. Okay, so this is the back of the van. Inside kind of functions as our garage, garage I guess. We've got more boxes for storage, same as the ones in the front. This one's full of climbing gear, ropes and cams and stuff. That's what we like to do and kind of why we're here. Next to it is assorted camping gear and things like that. Down in this one we've got uh, spare water tanks. A few of them poked in here. We also designed this to have space for skis. So our skis can go in the side there. This is uh, the box of all the tools I had to work with when we built this. They all came on the plane. So uh, there's like 10 kilos worth um, to try and do. I'm used to having a lot more than that, so it was a bit of a bit of a challenge to not have all my toys, but you've got to make do. We've put some wood to stop the um, tanks from moving so that they don't damage everything else. And again, they don't rattle because it's quite important. And another thing which is uh, hidden behind the scene so at the very bottom of that, there's a bucket, and in the bucket, there's actually the propane tank. Um, the bucket is sealed so that if there's a leak, it doesn't leak in the van, it leaks in the bucket. And then, and then there's the a bucket hole is vented through the bottom of the van. At the bottom, to make sure that um, propane gets out and not in the van. To, to, make super, well, to be super sure, we also obviously have a propane detector. Um, but we found that was a clever one um, to try and avoid any, uh, any risk. With it, it avoids having a door on the outside of the van, which is not that discreet. Um, and that's actually accessed from a little trap door below the fridge. So we just lift the fridge out and we can change our propane once every three months or so. Um, it costs okay. five bucks to fill. So it is a very it five bucks tiny, to fill tiny one. And it, it lasts for three months, cooking twice a day. And so, it gets uh, everybody laughing when we go to refill it because they're like, what? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> if you want to continue to the outside, what you'll notice is that we intentionally chose a very discreet vehicle. It's got no windows. Uh, usually when it's sunny and nice, we're outside anyway. We don't like to sit in the van and look out the window. We like to be outside enjoying it. So um, when we park up, it's just a plain white van, no windows, no one can see in with those curtains and uh, we can be there nice and cosy inside and uh, park anywhere we want basically. So, Thanks for watching our van tour. Um, if you do want to know more then you could email at customstealthcampervans at gmail.com. That information will be uh, available below the video. Just have a look there. And if you want a van to be uh, custom made for you, then send us an email, we can uh, work that for you. Thanks, Thanks guys.